This lesson covers the topic of algal blooms and eutrophication in fresh water. This lesson is to be presented in conjunction with hands-on lab activities involving the growth of two different types of algae under nutrient-enriched conditions. This lesson was prepared by Ivan Caballero and narrated by Sam Drerup. This lesson was created in part of the Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom Books Project at Ohio University, funded by the National Science Foundation. What are algae? The term algae is generic, and it's used to categorize a diverse group of mostly autotrophic photosynthetic organisms. They are considered simple due to the lack of vascular tissue that can be found in most land plants. They grow very rapidly, and some species are able to produce different types of toxins, and some species can even fix their own nitrogen. These two images give you a sense of how diverse a group algae is. The left-hand image is a picture of giant sea kelp. The diver is for scale. Giant sea kelp can reach lengths as long as 213 feet. Diatoms, on the right, are microscopic and cannot be seen with the naked eye. What is even more impressive is that these examples are not the largest or the smallest representatives of organisms that are considered algae. Algae have many benefits to the ecosystem and to you in your daily life. Algae are the base of most aquatic food webs and provide energy for consumers. Algae also stabilize the substrate and provide habitat for other algae and invertebrates to live. Many of you have most likely consumed or used algal and or algal-based products without even knowing it. Algae can be consumed directly like the wrappers of sushi or as an additive such as agar. Agar is a gelatinous substance that can be used to thicken foods such as ice cream. Recently, algae was also a potential source of biofuel to combat rising fuel prices through the oil they produce or from the fermentation of their biomass. What do algae eat? Or more accurately, what do algae need to grow and reproduce? Algae are photosynthetic organisms. Photosynthesis is the process by which solar energy from the sun is converted into chemical energy and stored to sugar. You are most likely familiar with the formula of photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide and water are converted inside the chloroplast of a cell to produce glucose and oxygen. The same process occurs in photosynthetic algae. All photosynthetic organisms require light. In addition to light, Plants and algae need nutrients. Excess nutrients can stimulate photosynthesis and increase algal biomass. The two most important nutrients when talking about algal and algal blooms are nitrogen and phosphorus. Nitrogen is added through the system through farm runoff or by atmospheric deposition due to acid rain. This is added to the system mainly through farm field runoff, but also from municipal waste. Here are some examples of what an algal bloom looks like. As you can see, these occur on a very large scale and can have very serious ecological consequences. What is an algae bloom? There is no official definition, but they are categorized by rapid increases in the amount of algae, both absolute number of cells and the volume of cells in an aquatic system. They are stimulated by nutrient addition, also known as eutrophication. They can be directly toxic to aquatic life as well as humans through the production of toxins, such as microcystins. They can be indirectly harmful to aquatic life, especially fish, because as the algae die, they are decomposed. As decomposition occurs, oxygen is removed from the water column. If too much decomposition occurs and the oxygen levels are depleted, fish cannot survive. What causes eutrophication? Eutrophication is an increase in the amount of nutrients that are in the system. This can be natural or human influence. As a lake ages, nutrients can accumulate nutrients leading to eutrophication. This is a very long process and is associated with the filling in of a lake. The most common cause of eutrophication is human-induced. It happens rapidly and is associated largely with modern agricultural practices, although urban areas can contribute due to wastewater treatment facilities. You will now conduct an experiment looking at how excess nutrients affect pH and dissolved oxygen of water. You will need two different types of algae and two types of fertilizer. 
You will set up the experiment and allow it to run for one week. You will monitor the quality of the water and compare the data collected over the duration of the experiment. Thank you for your attention.